Hello, you're watching Half New X, where junkie and good storytelling shares her thoughts, knowledge, and occasional weird ideas on stories and how they're told. 大考 the examination for everyone. Sounds very scary. Is a 22 episodes drama that has aired on both satellite televisions and internet streaming platforms. It is directed by Shen Yan and Ben Fang, written by four credited scriptwriters, among which the first credited writer Nie Chengshui is the writer who wrote Tian Cai Ji Ben Fang. It is led by a very seriously weighted cast, including Cheng Bao Guo, Wang Qianyuan, the king level actors of Chinese drama and film land, also featuring other famous people such as Guo Tao, Yan Binyan, Wang Xiao, Lan Yingying, and for the students, younger. Kids' roles: You have Li Gengxi, Hu Xianxu, Rong Zishan, Zheng Wei, Xu Yihang. And as the title suggests, it's focused on all kinds of tests for people who took part in the 2020 Chinese National College Entrance Examination, the very unusual year of the outbreak of COVID. This is a drama that's very specifically focused on a group of people living in a fictional town located in the. Southeastern China. It is one of those spearheaded by an RTA, National Radio Television Administration's projects that got lump sum together and termed as "Woman's New Era," our new era dramas, including quite a few dramas that are ongoing right now and will come out later. I have watched all 22 episodes, and I'll give it a 1.5 go. Mind drama. I mean, if you inflate it, it's not like it doesn't deserve a two gold mine. But for certain reasons, okay, I I just rate it a little bit tight and just put it in between one and two. And I think as a drama, there are certain things about it that are very well done, and I would recommend it based on those things. If you're curious about those parts, you should go and watch it. Type of thing. As I talk about it, you'll see. So now let's talk about the good thing and bad thing about this drama. On the positive end, number one, since it is a very proper drama, <laughs> that's literally kind of booked and designed by the NRTA, features very proper actors and actresses who come in and do a proper job. There's no fandom star celebrity culture in any way hijacking this project. So you're not gonna see any specific celebrities, famous people whose fame or whose whatever tramples over the storytelling quality. The story comes first. The characters comes first. Everybody just stay back. One of the things that comes with that is. An overall realistic lens on people. You don't see almost any makeup on anybody in this drama. Every character in this drama you're gonna come across living in a very realistic world where they are not beautified in any way, idealized in any way. Very rare to see that in a contemporary Chinese drama. The second thing about it that I think is worth watching is if you are somebody who is curious to see what is the life of high schoolers like, the last year of high school, and particularly. Particularly in the year 2020, because so many unusual things happened in that year, they did the thing that's very clever, which is picked out very representative individuals. The five students in the last year of their high school featured. At the core and surrounding them are their family environment, all very distinctive and different. Their aspiration, what kind of student they are, what they want to achieve, and then what is the challenge they have each. Quickly counting them, Hu Xinxu plays the 学霸 the very good student, performing exceedingly well at academic studies and hoping for the best. Tiers of universities. Li Gengxi's character, this girl who pretty much has been neglected by her parents because ever since she was little, the parents went out to a different city to do business, leaving her alone in her hometown. And she's literally brought up by the grandmother. And she's not the most talented. She probably can get to a mid-level university with all her might and trying. Then Rong Zishan plays this high schooler who has a better. Family financial background. The father is a policeman, although most of the time he sits in office and not really going out in the field. Then the mother is a management level person in a hotel. He wants to be an art student. Goes to fine art institution. It's his goal, but the parents are like, 
No, we hope you go and get like a job in finance or law or doctor, whatever the proper professions. You also have Zhongwei, broken family, only father is in the picture, father is rich in a different country, gonna go to an overseas university. So don't worry about Gaokao, you don't need to take part in it. He's very neglected, but he's rich and then he doesn't have any pressure of performing in school, but then that causes other problems. Then you have the character played by Xu Hang, only grandfather is still alive and he has very tight bond with this grandfather. They come from a very small village, very remote, very poor. And then the story will feature all of their stories, plus school teachers, plus different levels of educator in the system. It's actually a very dramatic story. It has so much different plot points going on. And in the space of 22 episodes, it actually got the story pretty well depicted and played out. And during every specific person's story, there are pressure points, emotional points, things that probably will, at least for a few times, get to the point where you feel as strongly emotionally as those characters. So it's a pretty solidly written script. Third positive point, I have to point out it as one specific thing. If not for anything, you should go and watch his drama just to check out one particular student's Hu Xianxu's role, his parents, played by Wang Xiao and Yan Bingyan. This is such an unusual unpage middle-aged couple of contemporary China of their specific circumstances and their weird dynamic and relationship. This three person's family has this unusual dynamic and I really can't think of equivalent in any other Chinese dramas recently. Wang Xiao and Yan Bingyan, these two actors, actress, played it so well, so masterfully that I think just for these two specific roles they play, they should get awards. These two are what I call proper actors. Think of recently, Yan Bingyan, for example, she's played a national security agent in Dui Shou in that drama, where she is always trying to catch Guo Jingfei and Tan Zhuo's characters. And she's so convincing as a middle-aged national security agent. Then in this drama, totally different, totally different. The small business owner cooks in the kitchen, in the back end, and serves people on the front end. Both are 100% realistic. You can feel, you can touch her almost. The texture of her performance is... And then Wang Xiao as well. He plays this middle-aged father who is so rare, a role that you see in Chinese Romland, hardly ever really. And he makes it 100%, again, 110% believable. I laughed, cried, and I felt so entertained by this drama for this specific family and all the screen time they've had. I literally stare at the screen and I just marvel at their performances. And also it's very well written particular family dynamic. I said so much, basically I'm telling you, if not for anything, go and check out this drama for the performance of Yan Bingyan and Wang Xiao being the parents of Hu Xianxu's role. Okay, so these are the good things about this drama. Now let's talk about what may not be ideal about this drama. Now the thing is, with this specifically themed drama, if you're not interested in it to start with, this is not gonna be a drama you wanna check out. And I can see why. This is not the entertainment value heavy drama, let's be honest. So probably not that many people are gonna go watch it anyway. This drama may be originally written longer than what it looks like now, and certain places does feel they have a very hasty pace and they cut things too quickly or some things just didn't get fully explained and it moves on. Not a huge problem but you may see it. The second thing, basically the reason why I didn't rate it even higher, the one major thing that I know they probably cannot really do it the way I want it, but I still want it. So this drama is set in 2020 COVID. January the 1st, people are talking about going back home, spring festival, Chinese New Year, and then shit happened. From January to let's say March and April, around that time of the story setting, really because COVID touched everybody and changed everybody's way of living. It has overall too easy an attitude and nobody really is too worried, too anxious. When you watch this drama, you'll find everybody pretty much is treating it very calmly and normally, almost with the ability to predict that it's all gonna turn out to be fine in a couple of months time, at least in China, like it got under control and it kind of was like, mm -mm, like that all the way until now, which is <laughs> okay, not how I remembered it. Although I wasn't in China, I so clearly remember the days, particularly end of January when it first started to let's say early March, that crossing a month and a half time where, wow, it was just so much panic and pain and not a nice time to remember. 
decorate the history up a little bit. Everybody does that, let's be honest. All dramas tend to do that. All countries have their own versions of decorated history. And honestly, if this drama actually depicts exactly how most of the time people were just going nuts <laughs> around that time everywhere in China, it's not gonna go through, I guess. Since this is an NRTA, spearheaded project. Probably from day one, they already kind of decided what the tone is gonna be. We're gonna feature this, feature this, but then we're gonna play down this, play down that. The drama is still watchable and they definitely didn't rewrite history in terms of just like making things that didn't happen happen, okay? It happened and a lot of things in the drama regarding a particular exam, for example, certain exams got postponed for a certain reason, it all happened. So that part is real, but just like psychologically how people dealt with it in the early days, of COVID in China. It just makes it look so easy and I know it's not easy. <laughs> okay, so it's the prettier version of things that you wish it happened that way in reality, but not on this timeline. It didn't happen like that. So I didn't rate it. If you take that part out, this is overall in other things a pretty good drama. And for the younger actors like Hu Xianxu, Rong Zishan, Li Gengxi, they did a really good job. Uh, I would say these are all very hopeful young actors. They may not be, let's say, yet all-rounded soldiers who can do everything and everybody has their range. But in this drama, when they play the high school students of this particular setup, that particular setup, they all did a very, very good job. And I have definitely enjoyed watching it. My mother even watched it back in China and we've actually discussed about this drama online. And my mother also is very, very happy about the Wang Xiao and Yan Bingyan couple in their performance. And she actually pointed out is the father actually is the person who has a psychological problem. But in the drama, it never clearly gets explained or pointed out that it's the case. But he went through this process of getting it treated by life, figures out a way to get out of it and try to move on to another type of better hopeful life. And when she said that, I'm like, yeah, 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 obviously he's like that. It's just the drama never points it out. One thing really funny about my mom is she's not a psychology major, but when she was in medical school, they did have certain terms that they have to do, courses that's related to psychology, mental health and all that. And she was the highest scoring student of that exam paper in that medical school's history. One thing she brags about of her life until now is she's the person who managed to hit the full mark of that paper and nobody has ever done. But then she turned out to be a cardiologist. <laughs> <laughs> so, life is interesting in that way. Just adding some random information at the end of this video. Now you have a reference point to decide whether you should go and check out this drama. Thank you for watching Avenue X. I'll see you in my next video. Meanwhile, live long and happy drama watching.